Hello, happy people. I hope you're having a great day today. Today we're taking a look at Legacy of the Dark Sword by Tracy Pickman and Margaret Weiss. It was published in 1998. It is the sequel to the 1987 and 88 trilogy uh, for the Dark Sword. All three of those were best-selling novels. Uh, this was published 10 years later. Uh, the first three novels were written very quickly uh, in about 18 months a war so, and they're published very quickly within each other. Uh, and then there's a, a time span of about 10 years from when they're published. Uh, this is not a bestseller, unlike the previous three books uh, in the uh, series, uh, but it's still going to be obviously something that was well read uh, and that sort of thing. I read it, uh, and uh, finally, for the first time, knocked it out over the last few days. I bought it as soon as it came out because I love this author pair and I really enjoyed uh, this series a lot and so I wanted to pick up the next book in it. So I, so I bought it as soon as it was published and I figured I'd read it soon uh, and then, I, and then I, other things got you know I got involved with things I got to college and I was reading HP Lovecraft and some other stuff and I was getting, taking doing a deep dive into the Cthulhu mythos and horror uh, in college when this thing came out in 98. Uh, so I was a few years in college, and I figured that I'd read it eventually. And then later on, I, I kept carrying it with me from when I was moving from place to place. I figured I'd eventually re go back and reread the Dark Sword uh, trilogy, which I hadn't read since I was in junior high and in the 80s. I uh, figured that I would really enjoy it. Um, and then I went back, and, I've, and I picked it, read this trilogy finally. Just like I thought I was going to uh, for this channel, uh, and to see what I thought of it, and I was going back and doing a deep dive into Margaret Weiss and Tracy Hickman as well. And I read uh, six books by them in the Dragonlance trilogy that got themselves and the follow uh, in the Dragonlance series, so six books total, uh, which are their first six books they have ever published, all of which were huge successes in best-selling novels uh, for the Dragonlance series. And they turned to this, and then I turned to this. Uh, so then I went back to this and read it. And I like this better uh, than the second tr trilogy of Dragonlance stuff. For example, I mentioned in my review of the first trilogy, uh, in particular the first book, that it was more, even even though I'd only read it once, the first the first trilogy, particular, uh, and the first book I read when I was a junior high, I've read, I had read uh, the the Dragonlance uh, Adventures and 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 the uh, and the second trilogy uh, once. Uh, and, I found that that trilogy to be much more memorable. I remembered all the key things, remembered key passages, right, uh, and so forth. It's much more memorable and much more interesting. I also enjoy uh, the world building of Thim Holland uh, and the surrounding world and the characters that are involved. Uh, you know, a Dragonlance is just a, it's just you know a bog standard uh, fantasy world. It doesn't have anything new or interesting to say. Obviously, you know every every fantasy world might have its own interpretations. Like for example, the the halflings and hobbits are different because uh, they're called kinder. Uh, they're struck with wanderlust rather than staying at home like halflings, or, or hobbits rather in Tolkien's world, or halflings uh, that might. Uh, and they're constantly going from place to place. They're constantly stealing things, right, uh, from from things. But they but they never believe that they're actually stealing. They're just, right, they're just relocating things or stop or finding things to bring bring back to their people's you know families or something like that. Oh, it just fell in my pouch. Aren't you glad I found it? for you, uh, those sorts of things, right, uh, if they're confirmed. Uh, and so they're a very different take on hobbits and halflings, but they're still just hobbits and halflings, right? Their dwarves are very similar, they're not a unique take, their knights are very similar, they're not a unique take, right? It's just a bog standard fantasy world for most of its part, with a few inventive ways of seeing it, but it's not coming to uh, this, but it's still really nice and I enjoy it. Um, and I've gone back and, and, and I've, so I've, I've read the original trilogy, uh, when I was in junior high, high school, and college, so three times, and then I went back and reread it again for a fourth time as a part of this series. And I've gone back and reread this, and now after after waiting a couple of months, I've decided to go back and reread the sequel. It was in my list, but I had some other things that I, I picked up uh, before. Now I've gotten to it, and now I've read the book. <laughs> I definitely enjoyed it. Uh, it was definitely much more gripping. I had started a book that was in my death queue, and I just wasn't feeling it. So I saw I stopped that book that was in my death queue, and then I just picked this up, which is the next book in my series, and I just was immediately absorbed and I loved it a lot. So, so the key co sort of concept and the key world building concept is, is that centuries ago, uh, there were wizards and witches, and magic was in our world, uh, but they they hated being persecuted by the non -pe magic using people uh, in our Earth world. So Merlin. Uh, fled uh, the greatest wizard. He fled and set up a new uh, world with all the magic users, and all the magic users fled. And they set up this world called Them Holland, which is our major key world. 
and he set up these boundaries on on the border between the two worlds, uh, which keeps magic in them Holland, which is where it flowed to, to into Earth. And so so um, he created a border, and now magic has been sealed from uh, the world of Earth into them Holland. And then he sets up, and then he has his tomb, uh, and so forth. And then basically, there are nine different magics that represent the different elements, and uh, two of those are no longer here. Those are time, which are the diviners that see the future and can tell the truths and so forth, and and uh, and spirit. Those are the necromancers that can communicate with the dead and tell you what they're like uh, and 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 advocate on their behalf uh, and those sorts of things. Uh, so those two are no longer here. Uh, then there are the four elements. With fire are the warlocks. It's pretty rare. Those are the warriors, uh, the war masters, uh, those sorts of things. Um, and so, so they have they have their own version of, of of that. And then there are water. Those are the weather mages that that make weather in the sky and will help rain come down for the crops and those sorts of things. Uh, they'll also serve as field magi in 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 farms. Earth is the most common. Uh, there are lots of Earth people that are born. They are the the field magi. Um, they're also the maker of things too, um, and so so they are they are also the uh, producers of they make chairs, they make things, and, th and these things are made out of magic. They're not made by hand. Um, so so it's a magically made chair, it's a magically made house, right, and those sorts of things. Um, uh, and then the final of the elements is is air, uh, and those are all those are are the the the, the, the I'm sorry sorry they're they're the weather masters. Water's the healers. And field mage too, um, and so those are the weather people. Sorry about that. I was too confused. I haven't read this book in a series in a while, as you can tell. <laughs> anyway, uh, death are the sorcerers. Those are the people that use technology, uh, and then life are the catalysts. And those are people that have low levels of magic themselves, uh, but can channel uh, magic into uh, uh, people uh, with the other eight things, and thus grow their their powers significantly. And so they're like magical batteries that you carry with you and can amp up your power and keep up your power levels even after you've exhausted them and so forth. So they're very, very powerful and they run the churches. Um, and they have a lot of influence in our lives too. Uh, so those are sort of the nine different technologies uh, based on uh, your, your... And everybody's born to one of those nine things, uh, stronger than anything else. And they're have, But they have powers in the others too. For example, nobody walks except for catalysts. Everybody has got some level of power to fly from place to place, right? Uh, and so that, that sort of thing happens. Um, and then you have a, a, a caste system, too, and then you have its own interpretations. For example, the Thim Hallen version of war, which we found out in Book 3, is very different uh, than our version of war. Anyway, uh, the first two books of this series were just an absolute proper fantasy. The third book of the series, which some fans didn't like because they liked the proper fantasy of the first two um, and a different world building, was more of a science fantasy as things evolve and break down um, and science takes over uh, technology. In fact, it's arguably military science fiction in some places, although I'm still going to say it's probably just more science fantasy. Uh, and this book set 20 years later is also science fantasy. It's got lasers, it's got uh, scientific explanations for how, how these things happened. It's got an alien invasion. That's the key impetus for what our, our events that are happening and so forth. So this is a, a science fantasy still, just like the third book in the series. So they just kept that genre. Um, there's not a lot of combat in this book. There's a lot of world building. It's very, very fun. Uh, there's a lot of action uh, that happens but there's just not a lot of combat that's just not 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 this novel's place right there's a lot of things that are happening a lot of things that are revealed a lot of things that are interesting um and i definitely liked it i'm going to be giving this a seven plus so like a 7.3 or a 7.4 then i'm running down to a seven um i thought it was gripping it was really well well done you can tell that margaret weiss and jesse hickman have developed their skill set after the first uh, three books and given themselves, you know, 10 years to develop them, their skills and publish other things that have been also bestsellers, right? 
they're all beloved uh, uh, pair of writers. Uh, but there you are. That is Legacy of the Dark Sword. I, like again, I can try to keep these reviews spoiler free. So if you want to talk about spoilers or talk about your thoughts in it in the comments below, I'd love to do so with you. If you enjoyed this video, why not hit that subscribe button because there'll be a lot more of these to follow. And then finally, I want to thank you so much for taking some time out of your day and investing it and watching my video. We all have so many things that are happening in our lives and we're pulled in so many different directions. So the fact that you spent this time with me is incredibly humbling and I appreciate it. So thanks again and have an amazing day.